Player led the country in receiving yards in 2021 and ended, up and ended his career as UMary's all-time leading receiver. After graduating in December, he trained in Arizona before participating at NDSU's Pro Day in Fargo. After garnering some interest from a handful of teams, one organization wanted to see more at this week's rookie minicamp. Kittner is headed to the Windy City to work out for the Chicago Bears. Kittner is one of four players from the Northern Sun to get signed by a team or invited to a rookie minicamp after the draft ended. More than 3,600 yards is most all-time in Umary history, and he did it while catching 291 passes. He's from Gilbert, Arizona, and had a workout with his hometown Cardinals on April 14th. Something of note, his former teammate and Bismarck native Luke Little was invited to the same Chicago rookie camp just a year ago. So here's a recap of all the guys from North Dakota universities that will be participating in National Football League activities in the coming weeks, months, and years. Cody Malk headlines the group as the only player from North Dakota or a North Dakota university that was drafted. Hunter Lipke, Noah Gindor, Spencer Wege, and Nash Jensen are all other Bison that were signed as undrafted free agents. UND's Tyler Hoosman was signed, and Garrett Mogg and Danny Kittner were invited to rookie camps. The Vikings added six players to their clan via draft picks this weekend. Most spectators were hoping that defense would be the main focus for Kevin O'Connell and Kwesi Adolfo Mensa, but they split their haul right down the middle. With the 23rd overall pick, they, they draft with, drafted a wide receiver to complement Justin Jefferson in round three, four, and their first of two selections in round five. They focused on defensive support like most were hoping for. They drafted Kirk Cousins' backup in BYU's Jaron Hall in round five and went running back with Dwayne McBride to fill in the hole that will eventually be empty after Dalvin Cook's departure. The general consensus is that the Vikings addressed most needs and did pretty well with a small batch of picks. The Minnesota Twins had the opportunity to take three or four over Kansas City this weekend with a win today. Nick Gordon batting in the second inning. He hasn't produced much offensively, so they go with the suicide squeeze this time. He's out at first, but he brings in Byron Buxton. The next inning is where the Twins really broke it open. It's Buxton again. He sees a hanging breaking ball and launches it to the third deck. His second big fly in as many days makes it four to nothing. Twins would get a couple more bat on base in the inning. It's Nick Gordon again. This time he's able to smack a base hit to center field. Trevor Larnick scores. The lead is up to five runs. Next batter is Willie Castro. He's going to capitalize with a runner on third. That runner is Joey Gallo. He pulls one through the right side. His RBI single makes it six to nothing. The offense still wasn't done in the frame. Christian Vasquez sprays one to right. Gordon and Castro will come in to score to make it eight to nothing. Only three innings into this ball game. That huge third inning would be all Minnesota needed to win their second straight series. The Twins are off tomorrow, then travel to the South Side to play the White Sox beginning on Tuesday. It's time for the best thing I saw this week. The NFL draft is always an emotional time for many people, from athletes to friends to family. So many people's lives are affected by a team's desire to pick or not pick a prospect. Deuce Vaughn is one prospect that rushed for over 3,000 yards in three years at Kansas State. His father, Chris, is the head scout for the Dallas Cowboys, and to his surprise, Chris's bosses drafted his son, Deuce, in the sixth round of this year's draft. Hey, buddy. How's it going? Hey, it's going good. This is Dad. My phone wasn't working. Look at here, man. You want to come to work with me next week? <laughs> I wouldn't mind that at all. <laughs> Deuce, man, congratulations. One of the coolest things I've ever seen in football was your dad making yes, that call. Thank you, brother. Thank you. So proud of you and your family. This is what the call sounded like when the Cowboys called Deuce ahead of selecting him 212th overall. Owner Jerry Jones and head coach Mike McCarthy let Chris be the first one to speak to his son and utter the now famous words, do you want to come to work with me next week? The Cowboys have since explained that they were eyeing Deuce this entire process and were hoping they'd be able to surprise Chris with the selection. It is